Welcome once again to Boscov's Burke's Jazz Fest Spotlight here on the People Chronicles. It has been a wonderful run. We've had lots of guests in here uh, talking about their role with Boscov's Burke's Jazz Fest on this, the 25th anniversary year. And it is my pleasure today to introduce to you two Frank Scott Award winners. That's a That's big right. deal. <laughs> that is a really big deal. And anybody who has not, is not familiar with that, the Frank Scott Award was um, initiated to recognize those who contribute to the furthering of jazz in Berks County specifically. Yes. Fair statement? Sounds That's what good. I understand, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do it. This is Chris Hesloff, and this is Mike Even. Thank Hi. you both for joining <laughs> us. Thank you. And we're going to go, I, I suppose, behind the scenes a little bit. A lot of folks come to the mm -hmm. Jazz Fest because they want to hear the music. They want to see a show. Mm -hmm. But there's a whole nother dimension at Jazz Fest, and it has to do with education, which explains why both of you have received this award. Is it nine, ten years ago, each of you started your own program with the Jazz Fest? Uh, mine started in uh, November of 2006. Oh, okay. Uh, it was called the Burks Jazz Jam. We started hosting a jam session at Zeswitz Music every month uh, for kids to come out and play with professional musicians. Through uh, Reading Musical Foundation, we would hire a professional group to come in and play for the kids. It has since morphed, and now we're taking the uh, Burks Jazz Jam out to the schools. Oh, and cool. uh, we're traveling, and, and we reach more kids that way, we found out, and uh, it's just a great idea. In fact, uh, we'll be at uh, Exeter Junior High next Wednesday for a jazz jam there. This is very cool. So yeah. you're taking the show on the road. Absolutely. Those musicians will do that. <laughs> um, jazz jam, you call it. Was, that, was the idea born from the midnight jazz jams at Jazz Fest? Kind of, yes. It's, uh, it's uh, basically a jam session. Mm -hmm. uh, we get together. Uh, we have our adult group perform for the kids, uh, which is always a lot of fun. So they get to hear how jazz is played by professionals, and then they get to come up and perform with those professionals. Um, and it's, uh, it's kind of like a, a jam session and a workshop all rolled into one because we get to teach kids, you know, uh, some pointers and things on what they're doing. They always yeah. say that um, if you want to get better, hang out with people better than you. Right. <laughs> and so you've provided that That's opportunity. That's why I hang out with Chris a lot. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> Chris, I hear you are pretty <laughs> good. What are you trying to get better? <laughs> <laughs> Both of you gentlemen play the saxophone. Yes. You've studied that, uh, yes. and I believe you're teaching at Albright? I teach part-time at Albright. I do the jazz band there and a jazz history class as well. And that's after a lifelong career at Muhlenberg, isn't it? 23 years at Muhlenberg School yeah. District, yeah. 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 Working with specifically jazz music? Uh, boy, I wish. <laughs> 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 uh, instrumental music mostly, uh, contra okay. band and jazz band, but my first love has always been the jazz band. And I'm trying to figure this out. You also, um, I think, Temple grad, and mm -hmm. you teach at the Yoakum Institute? Composing yeah. and arranging, mm -hmm. yeah. specifically jazz. No, uh, uh, I mean uh, jazz is my uh, uh, training, so I'm always uh, influenced by jazz. But uh, I don't really, tr you know, think about what I'm composing. I just compose music. So, so you don't put it into a genre. No, uh, okay. it, it often uh, ends up being jazz-like because most of the people I know are, are jazz musicians. Uh, but uh, oh, I just wrote an opera though, so. You uh, wrote an <laughs> opera. <laughs> I didn't really mean that segue, but no, <laughs> there, there <you laughs> like, <have> it. <laughs> tell me about it. What is the name of it? Uh, it's called the uh, the Bear Prince, and it's uh, it was it's a collaboration between the Yoakum Institute and uh, the Burke's Opera Company, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> I guess for about uh, eight eight or so years, I've been composing uh, music for a play at the Yoakum Institute for the primary stages, uh, which is uh, theater for. Uh, younger audiences. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always professional cast and musicians and whatnot, but it's for uh, younger people. So you do the composition for those, right? Okay. And uh, this year, uh, well, I guess about three years ago, we started talking about doing our own project uh, from the ground up. So writing the script and everything, and then uh, this collaboration with the opera workshop came up. So uh, 
thankfully, uh, about a year ago, uh, I was contacted uh, and commissioned to write the uh, the opera. I just wrote the music. Uh, Vicki Graff, who uh, is a theater uh, gal that I work with, uh, she wrote the libretto. Um, you've worked with the Reading Theater Project, haven't you? Yes. As well? I'm a core member of that project, yeah. You collaborate all over town. I see your name come up. You'll see Chris Heslop. And I, I think um, you and I talked a couple of years back when you were doing a collaboration with poetry and music, all reading right. poetry and music. Mm -hmm. So there are, you, you certainly are not in a box, Chris. Thank you. I try not to be. Not, not <laughs> at all. Um, and having studied in, I think, didn't you go to New York to study composing and arrangements? Yep. yep. So you've made a lot of connections. And it's my understanding you pull on those connections to bring these world-renowned artists to Reading for the Jazz Fest in an education program. How does that work? Right. Well, around the time uh, we were starting the uh, Jazz Jam, we started uh, another project, which is called Get Jazzed. Uh, J J A Z Z E D for education at the end, uh, and that came about through our committee, our uh, jazz education committee, which is Mike and I, John Ernesto, and uh, 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 ten to twenty sometimes other educators <laughs> from the area, and uh, we were talking one time about how to, it's always the big question how to get students to come and take advantage of this great stuff because the first few years we were on this committee, we had. Uh, some turnouts that weren't so weren't so hot, <laughs> so we, uh, we we decided to put on a festival, uh, and these uh, school jazz bands, some some of them go to one festival, some of them go to many festivals, mm -hmm. and it's usually a competition. So they're judged. They get a tape of uh, uh, a musician's comments, you know, a written out scorecard, a trophy, you know. Uh, you that's name it. nice. It's, well, it, it's, it's a good nice, evaluation. But uh, we we wanted to take that competition out of it and we, we wanted it to be oh. fully educational okay N there's nothing wrong with the competitions they're great but we have plenty of them so we thought the way we could uh, break into this would offer education so we did uh, the first one up at Kutztown University um, I guess maybe eight eight years ago or so and we had we used some of their jazz faculty and then we we brought uh, four or five in from New York and it was a it was a long day. It was the longest one we did. It was probably about six hours. Wow. And the, the bands would come, and they would go through uh, uh, classes, if mm -hmm. you will, and they would see uh, these different people, and they would perform. They would see people perform. And then at the end, they would hear uh, these pros perform. And uh, it was a great day. It was a great turnout. Everyone loved it, so we kept it going. And uh, currently, it's hosted at Reading High, and we still bring in... Uh, at the Citadel. At I'm the sorry. Citadel. Yeah. Citadel. That's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, as you develop these programs, um, when you have a hit, as you say, you know, you said yeah. that you did one and it wasn't that hot. But once you have one that clicks, then I imagine just word spreads in the community and among other musicians, hey, did you hear about this? And it's only growing over the years. As you say, you're taking taking it on the road to different high schools, your right. program, and, and now you have one at the Citadel. This all has me wondering a, a little bit because the workshops and you're teaching specifically mm -hmm. has to do with jazz and right. it's apparent that it's very important to educate jazz to almost um pass the torch so it doesn't get lost somewhere right i'm not familiar and i maybe just i'm not aware of it of mm -hmm. other um dedicated programs just to a p specific genre so why is it happening with jazz, and why is that important? Well, it's happening with jazz, I think, because it's important to us. Okay, so that's a good <laughs> answer. <laughs> as a jazz community, we want to make sure that the music survives. Um, it, when I went to, to high school, and I was a, a Muhlenberg graduate and ended up teaching there, um, we were one of maybe two schools in the county that even had a jazz band. Oh. Um, since then, just about every school in Berks County has their own jazz band, all 18 school districts. So uh, the educational aspect has really grown over the years. And that's great because that's how the music has to grow. We don't have the old system of, you know, kids hanging out near the local jazz club and learning from the pros like they used to because there are no jazz clubs anymore, per se. the truth. 
So it has to go through the schools. And there are actually quite a few students who uh, go on and study this music and make a career out of it. Um, How does that feel when you see that kind of progression? It's exciting. Uh, we, <laughs> we have, uh, I mean, they're, they're my friends now. They went through the school and I knew them when they were kids and now they're out of college and we hang out. Uh, Mike still has a great uh, star student. Uh, it's still in school down in Philly. And we'll, s we'll see all those guys during the Jazz Fest. I can only imagine you've been mentored along the way. Oh, yeah. That you would be so dedicated to mentoring other students and keeping this music alive. Well, mine started at Muhlenberg. Uh, Hank Hoffman was my band director, and he was a Count Basie fanatic. Ah. So from 10th grade on, we learned Count Basie's music, how to swing, you know, how to love jazz, and it's just grown from there. Um, you know, I played in college at Lebanon Valley and uh, just really had a great time with it. And I've, I've always loved the music and that's how it grows. And hopefully we educators are doing the same thing in our schools now, putting that love of the music out to the kids so that uh, they can enjoy it. And we know most of them aren't going to become performers, but if they become part of the listening community, that's even more important. It is. Because it spreads, spreads the joy. There is something very special about Boscov's Berks Jazz Fest because um, different artists that come in from across the country have expressed to me their appreciation for this festival because of all of these facets and because of the effort that is put forth to keep that music alive. Both of you perform. Yes. Regularly. Yep. <laughs> what do you like better, education? <laughs> and and passing it on or performing or you can't compare the two it, it goes together i think every uh, great jazz performer i know really wants to uh, you know lend a hand to the younger guys coming up and like mike said uh, to keep an audience coming up uh it's it's a give and take i think like any uh, art that, that passion you want to pass it on do you grow and learn from the students you're teaching Oh, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. This is a good thing. We're talking with Chris Heslop and Mike Eben, both uh, very, very talented musicians in their own right and dedicated to education and uh, keeping jazz alive here in Berks County. And that's uh, another spotlight for Boscov's Berks Jazz Fest. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mike Eben. And I'm Chris Heslop. And we're here on the People Chronicles. We'd like to ask you to like us on Facebook because we like being on the People Chronicles. And subscribe to our People Chronicles YouTube channel. Thank you very much and have a great day.